Here we are then with Enemy at the Gate, the um, second game in the Operational Combat series at this stage by the gamers. This game came out in the early 90s, I believe, 93, 94, so it's 20 years old now, um, using OCS version 1 rules. And it is covering the Stalingrad campaign. You can see here the Stalingrad pocket to Manstein's counterattack. Um, Army Group South, 19th of November 42 to 14th of March 43. This is a uh, big, big four, four map game. And I have been setting up, setting up the Germans. So this is where I've reached with the setup, and I call them the Germans. Uh, I'll use that as a shorthand for the Axis forces. Um, the, this force is predominantly not German. The German 6th Army is here in these stacks around Stalingrad, but most of the rest of the force are these olive green um, Romanians and another Romanian army back here, and then you get into the pale green Italians over there. And then in the, in the distance over here, you've got these silvery grey um, Hungarian allies. So a lot of allied troops, or German allies on the board. And then it's only right down here. Um, once you get across the Don, this area here is German, the German start of the German 6th Army. Down across here, and you've got the 6th Army, and then into the, I think, the 4th Panzer Army down here. But... Even then, that's got some some of these Romanian allies in it. So this is the Stalingrad campaign. Um, it has rules for um, the creation of the pocket at Stalingrad. And if we look at the map here, you'll see a blue dotted line running round. And at some point, it says there Stalingrad Fortress Zone on it. And that circle, Stalingrad round here following the line of the Don and, and back in down here to the Volga and then there's a wider zone with a dotted red line somewhere if I can find it there um, um, those are rail lines but somewhere there's a dotted red line which has the um, which has the uh, outer perimeter of the um, sort of fortress garrison zone it's called um, there it is fortress garrison zone this dotted red line and that that also weaves its way round uh, a wider sort of perimeter round here and across the Don up there and then down and down the side here so um, yeah that's that those sort of perimeter zones are used to control um, a fortress, uh, a sort of pocket that the Germans can declare Stalingrad essentially a fortress and that gives them advantages on on um, not needing so much supply to attack and defend and sustain their troops and so on. Um, having said all that, the Russian starting positions are delineated by these sort of white line, these yellow dividers here, and you can see the 51st Army, 57th Army, and so on. And they have all these, all these zones to set up in. But they, uh, essentially, the Russians have to create the Stalingrad pocket. They're going to start outside of this German line and have to punch through it, and create some sort of encirclement of this force and that isn't a foregone conclusion as far as I can see um, I'm looking at I'm looking at the Russians I'm sorting the Russians you can see them you can see them there on my wooden board um, 
but essentially this force is going to have to it's going to have to follow this river line sort of pretty much mirroring the um the german force all the way down the don river and there'll be set up zones for each of these in individual lines of troops if you like each of these lines of troops or sets of lines of troops um will get their own zone to set up in and so then it'll be a question of well where where does where do the soviets the russians have a favorable match up where it looks like they can make some sort of breakthrough um and with me playing them and I'm not the most, I don't pretend to be the most skilled OCS player in the world, it is quite possible that they don't get to form a Stalingrad pocket. Um, that I don't find the way to encircle this this group. Um, and therefore, I think we have to be ready, or at least I have to be ready, for a very, very alt-history version of the Stalingrad campaign right from the outset here. I really have no confidence that what I'm going to play is going to in any way resemble the Stalingrad campaign as we understand it historically. That said, I think this is an enormously interesting dynamic situation that we're going to have with, you know, a very, very strong um, Russian force looking to encircle an extraordinary, extraordinarily potent and well dug in but uh, very vulnerable in terms of supply German force some some allied troops of extremely variable quality and some extremely extended supply lines back to a board edge over there by my TV so um, yeah it's going to be interesting uh, and quite, but I think quite brain burning until I get my head round it as to exactly what the um, Russians are going to do here. Because essentially the Russians, as I say, the Russians have got all these zones, but within those zones essentially they have free setup, which means that I have to work out how to best use all these troops. Uh, to manage some sort of breakthrough and encirclement um, of this lot. And I just, looking at it, I really just don't know how that's going to work right now. Um, so I think I'm going to have to drop the sort of Russians down, um, just throw them in their boxes and then start looking at what the matchups look like. Um, and then try and take it from there. If you we look along the German line, I mean, you're not going to attack into this lot, for example, but you and these level three hedgehogs don't exactly look tempting. But then you look along the line up here, and you've got five level one hedgehogs there with and that you know open terrain beyond. <clears throat> and you think, well, maybe, maybe, because if I can get down here cutting into these rail lines and taking these places uh, take cutting that rail line there then maybe I'm able to cause trouble so um, yeah I think this would be one of my choices if this zone has sufficient forces in it to make that viable but if it doesn't then I'm going to have to look for an alternate plan um, so I'm already starting to think about those kind of things, but it it really does require me to be able to do it all in one go, I think, um, or at least most of it. I can't be going and coming back and going away and coming back. I, I need a good few hours to just sit and look at the game and look at the Russian forces and start putting them on the board and piecing their plan together. Um, so that's where I'm at in this um, opening setup uh, of Enemy of the Gates. This is by far the largest game I've ever attempted in terms of physical size for maps and probably in terms of counter density as well. There is a separate and blown up sheet um, for the Stalingrad area so I could, if this starts to get out of hand, I can actually transfer it to a separate supersized map sheet just covering roughly this area from these um from about here through across here to the Volga so um uh, I could use that but I'm not using it at the moment because I just 
I wanted to see the whole thing on the map as far, apart from anything else because it is a wonderful evocative sight I think to see that um, sort of uh, just that line of troops down the Don River and here onto the banks of the Volga at Stalingrad that's a very weird noise I think one of my cats is attacking something so um, yeah there you have it I will uh, uh, tr slowly get the Russians on the board hopefully with a plan but as I say I have um, I have no uh, I'm making no pretense that this playthrough is going to in any way resemble what we understand as Stalingrad but hopefully it will it will remain compelling and fun nonetheless.